and welcome back to Organized-ish. My name is Leela and today I want to take you on a full tour of everything I organized in my kitchen, every cabinet, every drawer, every single space. Most of it is organized, some of it is not, and some of it is still a work in progress. So you're going to see a little bit more ish than you're used to today, but overall, we remodeled our kitchen back in November. And so far, every organization system that I've done in here has stuck and it's all working out really well. So I'm excited to bring you into my kitchen, show you everything, and hopefully you get some ideas on how to organize your own kitchen. If you need organization and cleaning ideas, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I have all kinds of videos coming up to help you get through spring cleaning and spring organizing and help you get ready for the summer. We're gonna kick this off with just a quick little walkthrough of how my kitchen is laid out and basically how I use each zone. So this section over here is my storage. So this is our pantry. It actually used to be an old laundry closet. And this small closet here was the original pantry to the house. So we converted it to just a regular kitchen storage cabinet and I'll show you what's in there. This section over here is our beverage area. And over here is the cooking zone. All of our cooking stuff is here. And then this section here is basically like the serving and meal prep area. And then over here on this side, this is our door that goes to our garage and this is the way that we come into the house. So we have our command center area and this is where basically everything that comes into the house or goes out of the house starts. And then we added this island here recently because we had this big gap and we didn't know what to do with it. We couldn't put a cabinet here because of the vent and so the island has worked out really well but this is one of the spaces that's not organized yet. So I will show you what's in these drawers and hopefully next time by the time I do an organizing kitchen video that will be nice and tidy. For this tour, we're gonna start in the upper cabinets and then just work our way down to the countertops and the drawers and the lower cabinets, and then we'll hit the pantry and the storage closet. This cabinet is closest to our dining room, so it makes the most sense to have all of our dishes in it. It's also right beside the dishwasher, which makes putting everything away really easy. We recently switched to all of these dishes and we did kind of have a mismatch of dish sets and a lot of them had been broken. So I bought these from Target and you can see they look pretty thick and chunky and they were actually $25 per set. So I bought three sets to serve 12 and I am really, really happy with them. They look really nice in the cabinet. They look nice on the table. So far they've held up really well and then I did get some of the serving dishes for the top too. So on this cabinet, for the most part, I didn't add any organizers. I don't really feel like it's necessary for dishes. Um, I just have everything stacked on the shelves. And then at the top, I did add one shelf riser from Target. I'll make sure I link that in the description because you're gonna see that same riser quite often. I have it all over this kitchen, but it just holds some of the serving dishes up at the top so everything is accessible and we're not having to pull down those big heavy plates just to get to the bowl. This next cabinet is all of our meal prep dishes and I've got two shelves up here of glass dishes and then one of plastic and that way we kind of have both options. The glass are really great for being at home and the plastic are really great for travel and I also have some reusable Ziploc bags up in the top and we use those quite often as well. Moving on to the other side of the sink is this cabinet. I'm waiting on the light to loosen up a little and this is really just a miscellaneous storage cabinet for cooking. So I have all of our measuring cups on the door just to save space and I've got in this part it's just oils and vinegars and that kind of thing. They're inside this little turntable so we can get to everything without having to dig it all out. And then these are just refills for these over here. Up in the top 
is glass bowls and I'm using another one of those risers just so I don't have to take down the entire stack. Those bowls actually do nest on top of each other but they're very heavy when they're all in one big stack. So having the big ones on the bottom of the riser and the smaller ones on the top makes it a lot easier for me to be able to get down because I'm kind of short. These measuring cups are just hung on the door with clear command hooks and then I used a label maker with transparent tape to put what each cup is because on the cups the measurements are on the front and you can't really see that when they're hanging so the labels make it easy to know what goes where and it's really easy when we're cooking to just grab the cups and get on to the recipe. Beyond this cabinet is one up here and there's nothing in it it's just the vent that goes outside, nothing interesting there. But beside here is one of my favorite cabinets. It's kind of dark over here, but you can kind of get the gist of what's happening. So pots and pans have always been such a frustration for me. I have tried every single product on Amazon and hated almost all of them. And actually the one that you see here is really supposed to be turned vertically and you're supposed to put pots on it. And that was what I bought it for and I did not like that at all but it works out really well for these pans. It keeps them separated. And then more of those same target risers for the pans and the small pots and the little skillets. And then at the top is just the bigger pot and some of the baking dishes. This tower actually used to be a big wall oven section back in the 70s. And when we moved in, all of that had been taken out and it was just a big giant hole right here and then a drawer on the bottom. When we moved in, we had all of the cabinets refaced by a local company and they framed out a wine fridge in here for us and they made that drawer a little bit bigger and this cabinet became functional. The wine fridge just sits in here. It's just a stationary unit and obviously we need to restock because we just have one bottle, but it just sits inside. An electrician put a new plug in there for us and the wine fridge looks like it's built in, but it's actually not. And then down here in this drawer is our extra pots and pans. When I bought the new Always Pots and Pans, I thought I was going to get rid of these and just have those, but Lately, I've kind of been going back and forth between these and our always pots and pans just because sometimes I need more than what I have. So I haven't quite gotten rid of them yet. I always tell people to purge what they don't need and I'm clearly not taking my own advice because these old pots and pans are still here. Above the refrigerator is another cabinet in the new refrigerator surround and right now there's nothing in that either because it's not finished inside. But around on this side of the refrigerator, we have all of our cups and glasses and our very large mug collection. We use these glasses most often, so they stay on the bottom shelf. And then in this open area is just our teapot and our teacups. We also use these glasses a lot and they are plastic. These were 50 cents a piece at Walmart. And I don't know why, but I love those so much. I use them almost or maybe more than I use the actual glasses just because I know they're not gonna break and they hold way more than the others. Next to the plastic cups is our most frequently used mugs and there's another Target riser. It's the smaller size though, it's not the big ones that were in the other cabinets. So behind here, you can see behind the mugs, there are more mugs underneath. <laughs> These are mine and my husband's mugs on this part and then up here on the very top shelf those are my son's mugs minus a couple of those that are mine but my son is the tallest one of the three of us so he gets the top shelf because I can't reach up there. And this cabinet beside the cups has changed so many times since we've lived here. I feel like I'm constantly changing what's in this cabinet and what you see here will probably not be here a month from now because this is just my random cabinet that I don't really know what to do with. It's small and narrow and it's kind of in an awkward corner of the kitchen. So currently it holds vitamins and supplements and pet treats and up here is 
miscellaneous pet stuff like medicine and canned food bowls and things like that. It is helpful to have all of these things in this cabinet, especially in this little turntable, but I feel like we could better use this cabinet and move those to somewhere else. I just don't really know what I want to do here yet. Also on the door are more command hooks and they hold this clipboard that normally has my dog's medicine schedule as well as some canned food silicone lids. Since we're on this side, let's just move on down and over here, we're still in the beverage section and we have tea in this drawer and tea in this drawer. This is proof that we drink a lot of tea. We actually do what we call tech-free afternoon tea and every afternoon we have some kind of tea, we turn off our phones, we turn off the TV, we have no technology whatsoever and we just take a break and reset after our work day. And normally it comes from one of these sections just because they're fast and easy. But we also have loose leaf tea that we buy locally and those are all just stored in the bags they come in. The other drawer over here is currently empty. <laughs> it did hold coffee pods, but we recently switched to using bag coffee and these reusable pods. So now I don't know what to do with this drawer. Right now there's nothing in it and I'm sure I'll figure something out, but for now I'm not really worried about it and it's just gonna hang out. Maybe, oh, maybe I could move all of the supplements into the drawer. That's a great idea. The next drawer in the kitchen is beside the stove and it holds all of our cooking utensils. So this just has spatulas and spoons and whisks and all kinds of randomness mixed in here. These are the telescoping expandable dividers and I chose those versus adding in a full organizing set just because everything is all different sizes. So with these, they just slide down in and they use tension just like those old school tension rod, curtain rod holders, and they just stay in place. They have these little slots that you can put the dividers in and I will link these as well because this is really great for using a large drawer that the drawer trays wouldn't fit in because I can make a section for these which are really tall and I can have one full section for the things that don't fit in anything else. And I can have a tiny little section for wine corks. And so having all of these separated spaces, but still having the ability to rearrange and move these dividers if I need to, like they just slide right out. So I can customize this drawer as many times as I want to as our needs change. And moving on to the last drawer in the kitchen, is this one right here and it's right below where our dishes were up in this cabinet. So this is also right beside the dining room which is over here. So we can just grab the plates, grab the silverware, take it all to the table and I've got these bamboo organizers to hold all of our utensils. This one is an expandable and I just had this tiny, tiny little gap here, which is perfect for chopsticks, but all of our silverware is in this section. Our little spreaders. I had this random gap here that none of the trays would fit in, so I just put the coasters that we use on our table and all of our knives are here in this knife block. This knife block is great because it's got two tiers, so a knife can sit in the slots down here like this, but then there's also these smaller slots at the top for the little knives. Next is the base cabinets. And since our house was built in the 70s, there definitely weren't many pull-out cabinet options back then. And so in here to make our base cabinets a little more accessible so I'm not having to squat down and reach all the way back in, is I added these inexpensive pull-out shelves from Amazon. They were under $50 here in the US and they have a bunch of different options. Home Depot has them too, but I can just pull out each one in these cabinets and be able to reach everything like this lunchbox back here. I would have to crawl way back in there to get to it. 
So having these drawers, I have them installed in almost all of our base cabinets and I actually ordered more and they're in my garage to go in the others. So soon they will all have some kind of pull out. Since our food storage containers are up here, I keep all of our lunch prep stuff down here in this cabinet. That way it's all in the same little zone. This part over here is just plastic bags and little takeout things just in case we need them and straws and foil and all that. And then down here are my husband's lunch boxes and his water bottle from when he was still working. He retired two weeks ago, so he doesn't need these anymore. But for now, they're gonna hang out just in case. Moving on to under the sink. This section is, it, it looks fine. It's not gorgeous. It's not perfect, but it works. We have these little caddies that stick on the door. They're made by command. And I keep our dish soap and sponges here, as well as a command hook that holds a straw brush. And then we have, these are actually made to hold shoes. I bought them from Amazon and I use them to stack under the kitchen cabinet just so we can maximize some of that vertical space. So the bottom has towels, the middle has trash bags, and the top has the dishwasher pods and a few other dishwashing things. Then here in the middle is another turntable. You'll see these often in here too, but this is just kitchen cleaners. And then our trash can is on a pull-out system as well. I got this from the container store and it's an all-in-one system. So the trash can and the pull-out base part, it all comes together. And I'll link that in the description as well. But that is under my sink. This next base cabinet that's beside the stove holds all of our baking dishes, like the clear Pyrex kind of baking dishes, and they're on these pull-out drawers also. So that way I'm not having to break my back to get these heavy containers out of the bottom shelves. I can just slide all this out and get to what I need. These are pretty sturdy too, because I've had all of these heavy glass containers on there since we moved in three years ago. And so far nothing has fallen or broken or anything. This top one is just a few extra random things. We've got a few kitchen bowls and pot holders and then a few extra kitchen utensils that we don't use as often. These are things that I don't want to part with but I don't need them on a regular basis so they just hang out in this cabinet. And we use these kitchen scissors almost every single day so they stay in this cabinet on a command hook and that way they're always easy to find. I feel like we can never find them when we need them so the minute that I hung them it was like a total game changer for just not just me but also my family because we all know where the kitchen scissors are now. The last set of base cabinets are under our beverage area and these are really just all the extra random backstock things that don't have a home anywhere else. <laughs> we have extra baking pans and specialty baking pans. That container has all of my husband's grill stuff. Those are containers for going to like potluck parties and stuff and then a huge thing of sugar because it doesn't fit in the pantry. And then a few other pans down here. When you look at all the other cabinets in my kitchen, this one's kind of like the ugly duckling cabinet that no one really should see and wants to look at, but it's all of the things that we have to use in a regular kitchen. So you can't expect every single cabinet in your kitchen to look like a magazine because sometimes these cooking things just aren't pretty and there's no possible way to make them look better. Speaking of ugly duckling things in the kitchen, this island has been so great since we put it in in November and I've kind of organized the drawers a little bit but they got a little out of hand. There was another battery holder right here and I don't know where that went. But <laughs> This section has mail things and pins and push pins and a lighter and just random stuff in it as well. And then these hold other little small kitchen cooking gadgets. 
And the drawers are so shallow in here that I can't fit any kind of drawer tray that these actually fit in. So they just are what they are. <laughs> I can find all these things, but it doesn't look pretty. This is definitely the ish to organized ish because they are not organized at all. And underneath the island are two big baskets that hold all of my other cookbooks. I have quite a few cookbooks and I don't want to have them all out on display so I just stack them in these baskets. That way I can still get to them when I need them. You've seen inside all the cabinets and drawers so now let's move to the storage closets. We are going to save this one for last because you'll see, but this one's my pantry. We are going to jump into that and it might be a little dark over here. First things first, I have to slide these baby locks. No, we do not have a baby, but we do have two cats that are always trying to get into the pantry and steal our food. So we have to lock the pantry doors all the time with those sliders just to keep the cats out. This is our new custom-ish pantry and it actually used to be a laundry closet. This was where the laundry was supposed to go when we moved into our house but it wasn't enough space for us so we ended up moving it into a sunroom and so we had this open closet and we weren't really sure what to do with it and we ended up working with a local handyman to turn it into this awesome pantry. These are two stock cabinets that I got from the Home Depot and we just built in the little cubbies around it and then made a wood top to put over the top and it's all trimmed out so it looks like it was made to be here and it was actually just some stock cabinets. We've got the microwave in here just because there was nowhere in the kitchen to put it. These cans are on clear can risers. They're from the Home Edit collection from Walmart. And up here there's more like jars and bottles that are also on those can risers from Walmart. And then this container here, you'll see these quite a bit through here and they are all from Walmart in the Home Edit collection too. I just bought the big pantry sets. I think I bought like two or three of them and just used them all throughout this space and in the other closet that I'll show you in a minute. I don't decant all of my food, but I do the things that we use most often and all of our baking items. And that's really just so we can get to them and we have enough space to store them and see them. So this section up here is just baking items and this section is just rice. This section down here is all noodles and pasta. Over here is all spices. This is the breakfast area where we can make smoothies and cereal and salt, which has nothing to do with breakfast, but it didn't fit anywhere else. We have snacks here, so chips and cookies and crackers. And then at the very top, I can't reach these without a step ladder, so these just hold back stock. And in order to not have these expire and not have to pull them down every single time I'm ready to go grocery shopping, I just keep a list in the notes tab on my phone of what's in there and what their expiration dates are. That way I can check that notes app before I start making my grocery list so I know if I have some back stock already and that way I'm not buying duplicates. In these side cubbies are more snacks that we have during work days and onions and potatoes, but I need to restock. This side is s'mores and movie night because our fire pit is right outside the back door. Inside the drawers, we have granola bars and oatmeal and fruit snacks. These, this is kind of like the grab and go section. As is this one got drink mix and chip clips and a couple of Cadbury eggs, which I'm probably going to eat as soon as I get done filming this, and raisins and a ton of Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> this is my lunch drawer. My son and I have food allergies and my husband does not, and so we keep our 
safe allergen free items in this drawer and that was really the main inspiration for adding the drawers to our pantry in the first place because my husband can have all of his gluten egg dairy everything in this drawer and that way it's not contaminating anything it's completely separate and we can come to this cabinet and know that what we're going to eat is 100 percent safe in the bottom drawers, this is just back stock, extra gluten-free bread, and tea, and extra popcorn, and random things. And then this bottom drawer is all back stock, spices, and baking supplies. And finally, we have this closet. Now this is still a work in progress. I have been working on this, and you'll see that it's not done yet can kind of see, I'm gonna to have to turn on this light. You can kind of see here where I had to tear off these shelf holder things, wood things, in order to fit this divider in. And so those are torn off, the baseboards are torn off, and I'll get to that eventually. But right now it's not really that important to me because it works. The first thing that works out really well for this closet is this door rack. And I'm able to keep all of our protein shake items and our water bottles and everything stored on this door. These things take up a lot of cabinet space. And so being able to keep them on the door by using the vertical space allows me to not have to have all these bulky items taking up a cabinet. Then on the bottom part of this closet, I just added a big cube shelf and it holds all of our appliances. Sorry, it's really dark in here. But we've got like the blender stuff and the air fryer and toaster and all the little different gadgets that would take up a lot of cabinet space. I'm able to keep those in here and everything is just really easy to get to. Then for the upper part, I used more of the Home Edit collection containers from Walmart. And these are the ones that are drawers, so you can pull them out and they stack on top of each other. And then these are just the regular open ones that don't have a lid or a drawer. I used my Cricut machine to label each drawer. That way I know exactly what goes inside and that helps us not clutter them up and just pile up anything in there. You can see in the baking one, when I open it up, all of these items are inside. I can actually take this out and put it up on the counter and all of these open up separately. So it just makes all the stuff so accessible and so easy to get to. That is it for the kitchen tour, but I want to show you one more space really quickly because you're probably wondering where all of our serving items are for when we have get-togethers. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I love to entertain. I love to host parties for our friends and family. And I do have some special dishes and glasses that I use for things like that. And they're not stored in my kitchen. I just don't have enough space in there. So I wanna take you on a super short tour of the storage spaces I have in my dining room where I keep all of these items. This is my dining room and it's right off the kitchen so I'm able to use extra storage furniture like these to keep all of my other things that don't fit in the kitchen. This buffet holds all of our serving dishes down here in the bottom. So they're like the platters and the different little butter dishes and things like that that just don't fit anywhere else. I'm able to keep those in here, which really frees up a lot of space in our small kitchen. There's also a little hidden drawer up here that holds our antique flatware that we use for the holidays, along with extra little serving things like cheese knives and silicone straws. And then we always have napkins right behind the table because we always forget to get them. So having them right here this is my husband's chair he sits here he can just reach behind him and grab the napkins if we forget them and then we keep beverages here and the extra back stock in this other little cabinet on the other side of the dining room is this big cabinet and we just added it this year right before thanksgiving and inside it holds all of our drinkware and like party, table, decor, candle things. So we've got 
small glasses at the top, larger wine glasses at the bottom, and then the very bottom sections hold candlesticks and candles and napkins and tablecloths and everything we need to have a party. These are more of the home edit containers from Walmart. They're just so affordable and they're such a great size. I've just used them all over my kitchen and in here in the dining room and I actually use them in my laundry room and they work out really well there too. I hope this gave you some ideas for how to organize your own kitchen and pantry. And if you have any questions, head over to my Instagram. I've got tons of reels and posts that have all kinds of quick ideas and tips for kitchen organization. And I also have my kitchen planner, which helps you plan out how to organize all of your cabinets and drawers and do a full layout. I'll link all that down below in my description and make sure you subscribe and like this video so you can get more organizing ideas in the future.